What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter three or part three of our series of the SSI Diver Stress and Rescue Program. And in part three, we're going to look at before, during, and after a dive and how stress can affect us in each of those areas. Now a quick disclaimer, please do not use this video series as a way for you to go out and be a rescue diver. You need to seek out proper training from your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor before you try any of the skills and techniques throughout the program. Our video series is simply a way for you to help study to pass your final exam. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter three. Now the first part of chapter three is dealing with stress before a dive ever starts and a lot of problems can be prevented by simply doing pre-dive safety checks. This is something you actually learned during your open water program. This is where you go through your equipment, you make sure your BC, your weights, your releases, your air, and everything's finally checked out and okay to go dive. You can also check out yourself to make sure that you are going to be safe when you're out there diving. Now you and your buddy can discuss emergency procedures on land and by doing a proper briefing before the dive, you can help eliminate any problems as well. I know personally as an instructor, there's a lot of times where we have little minor problems with our equipment and due to time restraints, we go on out there and we dive anyways because we have the right knowledge and the experience to deal with that. However, you as a diver without proper training may not have that. So before a dive, we can prevent all problems. And just remember this, the best way to solve a problem is to simply prevent that problem from ever happening. And a proper pre-dive safety check and dive briefing is the easiest way to actually do that. Now I do want to make a quick note, if you are say an InstaBuddy on a boat or if you're observing someone on a dive vessel, try to put their gear together and they're having problems, you need to create a positive environment. One of the things that I do if I see somebody making a mistake is I'll walk up to them, I'll introduce myself, hey my name's Brian, I'm an instructor here. Uh, I've never seen somebody set up their gear like that, but I do like learning new things. Can you explain to me why you're doing it that way? Versus just going up to somebody and saying, hey, uh, you're making a mistake. You're, you're doing it the wrong way. I'm creating a positive environment. What I'm also doing is pointing out something so that they can actually learn from it. So we do need to be positive when we approach somebody if we see them making a mistake before a dive. Now the next part of chapter two that we're gonna look at is the actual diving stage. This is from the time you jump in the water to the time you get out of the water. And there's a lot of things that can cause stress during that. A lot of times divers will choose not to use the proper entry method based off whether they're going off a boat or they're going offshore, or they once they get in, they don't get neutrally buoyant immediately or positively buoyant if they need to stay at the surface. They just immediately start going down. And a lot of times this can cause a lot of difficulty, such as maybe they have ear problems and they can't equalize or maybe they are overweighted and they didn't do a proper weight test once they got in the water. And this can cause more problems as we descend. If we're overweight, it's going to take more air in our BC to get neutrally buoyant. And of course, this is going to use up more air. Our sac rates are going to go through the roof. And simply by calming down, relaxing, and simply breathing, we can work through that. So once again, even at the beginning as you jump in you still should be doing a proper weight test getting your breathing under control making sure you can equalize and then conducting the dive itself now throughout the dives we need to make sure that we're close enough to our body or our buddy that we can render aid if a problem occurs we need to monitor our gauges and our computers so, so that we don't go into decompression or so that we don't run out of air when we're underwater we also need to be observant of everything that is around us as well that way we're not coming across any type of say a hazard while we're underwater or even some type of animal or creature that could cause us harm while we're underwater. Now the last part of this chapter we're going to look at the end dive stage and this of course is once we get back to the surface how do we get back on a boat how do we get out of the water and what do we do if we're caught in say heavy waves or something like that. I know a lot of divers will neglect their BC they won't positively inflate once they get to the surface. Or if they do start having trouble, they don't want to lose anything, so they neglect actually dropping their weights if they say had a BCD failure and they couldn't stay positively buoyant. I know weights are tend to be the most expensive and I don't want to lose them, but if it was a situation where I had to ditch weight, I would rather lose the weight than of course lose my life. So a lot of divers fail to get positively buoyant at the surface or they even fail in the beginning stage not to come up with the right amount of air in case there is a problem. 
problem. Now, one of the things that you can do to fix this problem is dive the rule of thirds. This is something I personally do. If I start with 3,000, I turn it to, and I always end my dives with 1,000 PSI. Now, most dive charters will tell you to come up with 500 PSI, but by being a little bit more conservative, you're going to have that extra little bit of gas there at the end of the dive just in case something happens. Now, once we are out of the water, it's very important that we do log our dives appropriately and that we're taking good care of our gear, whether it's washing it up, storing it the way it should be, or we're getting it fixed if we had an equipment failure throughout the dive before we actually go out and use it again. By doing all these tips and techniques, we can actually be safer as a diver and be more efficient as a diver in the future if we're ever out there having to help somebody while diving. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter three. I really hope this chapter helped you out. Like I said, please seek out your local SSI diver stress and rescue instructor before you go out and try any rescue techniques in the water. Our video series is simply here to help you pass your final exam. If you got any questions on this video or any of the videos in this series, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it as quick as I can and as best as I can as well. But for that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.